Hi, my name is Ray. Welcome back to the radio workshop and part two of the uh, the video where I'm restoring the Cossa 501 Melody Maker radio. Uh, right, where we got to in part one. I've now done the capacitors. The cabinet's done. I've put a lead on the this replacement speaker. A couple of wander plugs. So basically now the cabinet will is ready for the chassis and. Uh, the chassis will just slide in, hopefully, like that, almost. And, uh, just have to line up things. That's it. And uh, a couple of screws which uh, hold the chassis in place. It's all beginning to take shape now. the chassis in there. Hopefully the replacement speaker I've fitted is going to sound nice and not uh, gaunch or, or crack or sound dreadful. I know ideally I should have tested the speaker before I fitted it but um, <clears throat> I think I remember the radio that one came out of and if I remember correctly it's quite a nice radio. So the speaker plugs in the back there like that. I'll curl this wire up a bit later, just coil that up. Uh, then we want our aerial and uh, turn that round. Turn it on. You can now get the idea of the, the finished radio. Let's do something with the lighting in here. So there we are, there's the Cossa Melody Maker 501 AC. And it works. So it's cracking there. So that's a loose. The one of the ones open out a bit. So. Brian Hay has been a guiding force with Queen since 1971, and we're celebrating his 63rd birthday today on goal by playing. The one the plug is sort of split pin and they want opening. So opening so it's a tight fit into the socket. Um, so that's that's good. I've got to put the fit the knobs on. I won't bore you with that. I'll fit the knobs on, then you can come back in a second. So there we are. That's the control knobs on. Which, uh, finish that off nicely. The uh, looks so much better now that the, the dials in there. Um, as I say, quite a lot of work this one on the cabinet as well. What with the speaker cloth and everything. Uh, still got to give it its final polish. Uh, I haven't put the back on yet. Um, I should uh, do that in a minute. Then what I'll do is put it on the uh, test bench which is over there and I'll use it all day, every day for several days. It's, it's no good just running a radio for a couple of hours to test it because um, this might not have been used. This was 1950 when this was manufactured. Uh, and I'll say, for example, it was used for 20 years. Someone bought it new, used it for 20 years, uh, taking up to 1970, possibly when they bought a transistor radio or, or whatever. So this one went in the loft, say 1970, after 20 years' use. Um, that's 40 years in the loft. That's a long time for it to sit in the loft, or garage, or wherever, for 40 odd years. And that's quite feasible that that could happen. So, basically, what I'm saying is, although I've changed all the capacitors, uh, the dial drive cord, uh, fitted a replacement speaker, um, completely service the radio, new cloth, speaker cloth. Uh, I've done a lot of work to this one. New mains lead, by the way, new mains lead, new plug. Um, although I've done all that, you might find after several days one of the valves gives up. Um, 
or one of the other components. I can't change every single component in the radio, obviously. So it's not been used for, say, 40 years. That's quite possible. So it's also quite possible that even though it's working fine now, after a couple of days, one of the resistors or whatever could, uh, could decide to fail. That's why I do like to test. I like to test the radios for a week. Um, <clears throat> It's no good just running it up for a few hours and saying, yes, that works, that's fine. I like to run them for about a week. The next thing is to put the back on. Um, it's got an internal aerial, these, it's uh, an internal loop aerial, which is inside the back there. A couple of wander plugs. Um, <clears throat> but sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. I'll see what this one's like. But what I usually suggest to, to people is, run a, an external aerial, just a piece of wire um, around the picture rail or around behind the, the furniture or whatever. Unless of course I want to use shortwave. This has got long, medium and short. For shortwave listening, um, really a, a decent length of wire, say a minimum of 20 or 30 feet, um, preferably outside. And if you can get it outside, run it down the garden, perhaps 60, 70 feet, something like that. But um, probably find just for local listening the internal aerial will be will be good enough we'll see um, so there we are I shall fit the back on now and uh, and we'll see what that internal aerial is like okay that's the radio back in the cabinet uh, the backs the back panel fitted there we are I'm just going to give that a bit of a clean up uh, the internal aerial is plugged in and seems to be working. It's, um, sounds, sounds nice actually. Nice little bit of bass there. Um, yeah, the internal aerial, as I said earlier, is, is not brilliant. It's alright for local stations. Um, and long wave, there's a lot of interference in the workshop here, especially on the internal aerial. So I'd probably recommend that the customer use something external. So there we are, it just wants its final polish. Um, I'll polish up the knobs, but basically it's all done and ready now to be tested for several days, if not a week or so, and then back to the customer, who I hope will be very pleased with it. Um, so that's it, I hope you've enjoyed the video, uh, part one and part two. Don't know what we're doing next. Might do a video about a pie black box record player, perhaps the restoration one of those might be interesting, we shall see. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it, bye for now.